Got it. Uh, there we go. Well, actually, uh, uh, quite a big memory. Uh, it's not too long ago we were there with the old Scorps. Yeah, we were and, there too. Uh, were you guys at the show? Yep, yep. Absolutely. It was, I have a, it was, I've seen you quite a few times in, in town for the past 40 years. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Uh, no, at this time... I was so nervous really? for a tennis elbow. Mm. Uh, I can tell you, Montreal was the third show on our tour. We started in Quebec City, no, in uh, Toronto, and then Quebec City, and then Montreal. When when I came off stage in Quebec City, I could not even h hold a drumstick. Wow. with my left hand and i told the boys i think it's over because i i had this uh i had a problem throughout the summer with my elbow a little bit and uh nothing that was super bad but in quebec city and, and toronto something happened i could not even close my hand and i went to a fantastic doctor in Montreal, uh, through a friend of mine, his name is Michael, and he fixed me up. And uh, I was doing the show just with no problem at all, and the rest of the tour. So, but it was a few nervous hours <laughs> when we rolled into Montreal. I'll tell you that cortisone shot—that's what you got right in your arm, I guess, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, I went to a specialist here in Sweden, and uh, it's much, much better now. But I've been dragging this around for almost a year now, you know, and I don't know where it came from. So but Montreal was the turning point right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, just before we start, is your father Greek? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your mom, she was, was she Greek? Swedish. Swedish, okay. You were born yeah. in Sweden, right? Yeah. 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 My parents are both Greek from Greece. Oh. But I was born okay. in Canada. But I was born in Canada. Oh, where 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 in Greece are they from? It's Macedonia, which is uh yeah. it's it's Castoria, okay. Macedonia. It's a small town, <laughs> but it's north. My father was from Athens. Yeah, yeah. That's uh Oh Pereos actually. Between Athens Pereos, an area called Nik Nikia. Oh, that's nice. Nic that's Nicholas, nice. Yeah. Very yeah. nice down there. So did, did, did you end up learning Greek or not? Or Swedish? No, because <laughs> I was stupid. Of course, in Swedish school, when you were when you were in, I believe, third grade, second or third grade, which means you were about eight years old, eight, nine years old, um, you, you you got offered to, to learn the second language of, of a parent, but they spoke Swedish at home. My, my yeah, father yeah, moved yeah, to yeah. Sweden, you know, and as a kid, I wasn't interested at all. Today, I regret it big time. I mean, I wish I learned it, you know, but you never know. Yep. Well, they forced me to go to Greek school, so it's... Uh, oh, they you know, did? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But that, I, that's I, a I whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I understand more... When I'm down there and they talk, I, I understand what they are talking about. Not specifics, but but that's about it, you know. Uh, do we have, uh, how many minutes do we have just, just to, to time it? We have 30 maximum. I have another one at uh, in 25 minutes, so. Okay, so let's go. Welcome to the Metal Voice today. First time on the show, Mickey D, Scorpions fame, Motorhead oh, yeah. fame, King Diamond fame. Uh, the exciting Bad Magic is now serious Bad Magic. 
which is was released on Fe- February 24th on Silver Lining Music from the original album that was released in 2015. This is a bonus. It's got bonus discs on vinyl, on CD, has two unreleased tracks, a live disc as well, and an interview with Lemmy. Thank you yep. for being on the show, Mickey. Thank you for having me. If Happy lovely stall. Montreal. Very <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Uh, lovely Montreal. It's a great city, and and uh, you guys have uh, my favorite hockey team as well. Yes, of course. Formerly great hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. So, can you tell us more about the reason behind this re-release of Bad Magic? Uh, I know that it's a trend now that when an album makes its mark after you know, sometimes 10, 20, 30 years, it's it's time to re-release it with additional material. I understand there's probably a record company involved there, a decision, but tell me how you select, like, were you invited in the selection of the extra material? Well, it, it, of course, but there really is not a lot of extra material. We never, ever had that. Uh, when we wrote a record, we wrote, if it was, oh, we want 12 songs or 13 songs, we wrote 12, 13 songs because, uh, as you remember, we gave out a record every other year, pretty much. It was 18 months or, or so between. I mean, we wrote a lot of material, but we were not a band that liked to do a lot of extra material and stay in the studio. We wanted to get back out on the road uh, as soon mm-hmm. as we could. So, uh, can, yes. Can you tell us about uh, Bullet in Your Brain and, and, and Greedy Bastards for for fans who who may uh, be curious about, you know, getting the, the reissue? Uh, tell us about these tracks. Well, it is tracks that were supposed to be on the record, actually. But as you remember, we did a couple of covers that made the <laughs> the album. All well, David Bowie there and and a Stone song, you know. And uh, I remember there was a little bit of an argument about that. Uh, but uh, when we chose to do a couple of covers, Lemmy did not want to do the Bowie song at all. He said, "I don't want to destroy that song." And and and. Uh, me and Phil insisted actually on, on doing this song, especially Phil, because he's the one that actually picked it. And and then Lem, Lemmy gave it a shot and it turned out to be one of his favorite tracks. <laughs> and then there was an argument about that song or, or uh, Sympathy for the Devil. Uh, and, and it turned out the way it did. And not argument, but we, we didn't know what, we didn't really know what to do or what to release there. So these two tracks kind of got put behind uh, and I almost forgot about them until we, we opened this can of worm, you know. You You say this can of worm, were you (laughs) anticipating uh, what repackaging meant? Uh, Because you know that the diehards will want it. I personally wanted it just for the live tracks, and, and these two are, are great bonuses. Uh, tell us about it when you get that call and says, "Let's no, let's I, get I, more." I, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. Uh, I see some comments about some fans or or people out there. Lemmy's turning in his grave. It's all about money. Shame on you! All this shit. I mean, uh, it's it's really not about any money. We're making nothing on this. This is just to prolong. You know, we released these lost tapes, and we're just prolonging the Motorhead era, uh, keeping Motorhead in the loop, kind of. And and for the real fans, and now I mean the real fans, they still have not. Uh, kind of let us go in a way. The band is not existing anymore physically, but we want to prolong the, the Motorhead legacy and 
and release these things for fans that appreciate and collect and uh, enjoy these kind of items, you know. But when we're talking money, like these idiots suggest, like, <laughs> you know, it, it, there really is not any fucking money. In this. It costs more than it tastes, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> we're, we're only doing this, as I said, to to keep us in the loop. And look at this. Here I am doing press day after press day about Motorhead, which is fantastic, you know, because uh, – the interest is still very high. I think it should be because I think it's one of the most respected bands in the world. And uh, if we can prolong this and get a new generation to to jump on it and, and listen to newer stuff and, and move back into the older stuff, it, it's just, it's a great win for everyone. I mean, why not? I mean, if these people that have a problem with it yeah, they just don't have to fucking go and buy it, period. You know? <laughs> That's the way they say it. <laughs> Mickey, what about the fans? There's some fans that say, continue. Continue, you know, continue the legacy of, and go out and play the songs, and, and we want to hear the music, even though Lemmy's not there. And then there's another group of fans that says, don't you dare go out and yeah. play. <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that, I mean, look, Foreigner doesn't even have any original members or kind of going out there. But you guys right. have been on, I mean, how many albums have you been on? You've been on like on 10, I, 12, 12, 12, 12 albums, 12 right? If anybody could go out and play, it would be you guys, right? Yeah, but exactly. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Because all they have to do, if they have such a problem with it, just stop listening and stop following. But there is people out there that still want to hear these songs. But with that said, it has to be done in in a respectful and tasteful manner. And 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 I won't mention any bands or names here, but everyone does not do that. And they're kind of overstepping uh, where it, it, it kind of becomes so obvious that there only is money that they're out for. And when it comes to our ordeal, it really isn't any money. But, but, would, but would you go out and tour the name Motorhead, you know, you and Phil? No, no, oh, yeah. no, that, no. That That's never. a lot of fans want that, and other fans don't want that, right? So. No, I, I really don't think they want us to do that. That's to me, is stepping over the, the line. We will never, ever, ever tour uh, with Motorhead as a name, ever, and bring someone else in. That will never happen. But what we are doing is doing some some shows here. And I just did two shows Saturday and Sunday here in Sweden with two younger guys and did 10 Motorhead songs. And this show sold out in less than two weeks. I mean, bam, bam, we had to add that Sunday. And and it's so great to play the old classics again and and perform. But it has nothing to do with trying to be motorhead and this is not advertised as motorhead it's advertised mickey d with friends yeah for instance so I, there, 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 I, there's a definitely a, a a line there but what i can't understand is a lot of people that have a problem with let's say the release of the lost tapes which is great you know great material live record live recordings uh, around the world fantastic packaging vinyl albums and this new uh seriously bad magic which was a great record and we actually uh released two two new songs you know what's the problem <laughs> i don't get it i don't uh, get it at all you released more than two songs there's of course 14 live songs now, live oh, material yeah. from Motorhead is nothing new. Uh, I was 14 years old when I bought No Sleep Till Hammersmith. But now you have 14 tracks from live at the Mount Fuji Rock Festival 2015. That was, of course, uh, towards the end. Uh, 2015 was a tough year, I remember. I, I, I saw a couple of the shows during the tour. 
what are your memories of that uh, Fuji Rock Festival and and the reason why the show was recorded for posterity? Uh, I don't recall exactly what the deal is with with a specific festival uh, more than it was a great festival, obviously, and and it was one of the better days, I suppose, for Lemmy. Uh, because it, it it went up and down, and there's no there's no secret about that. I mean, we had shows where he was maybe more tired than normal, and other other shows where he was on fire. Basically, the the main deal was that me and Phil we had to put in 120 percent in in the performance, and Lemmy had to put in 200 percent. You know, uh, and and we gave it everything that we absolutely could. Uh, what I would say uh, is more um, important is maybe the quality of the recording, you know, that we could actually do something with it, you know. Some some uh, shows were probably even better, but with less good quality i suppose in in the recordings for some reason and uh th that i i really don't know uh too much about because i, I i'm being um I, i get to listen to certain live shows around the world that we've done and some sounds really really good and some sounds terrible you know of course because it was recorded crap crappy you know so it, it's hard to say why But I think it, it was a great choice to choose this one because, uh, you know, uh, we're not there too often. And it's a great little little boot to our fans out there. And, you know, it, it, no, it's good that we, we have uh, different parts of the world taking part of, of, of this whole ordeal, you know? You know, um, I got to say that, first of all, I love the album in 2015 and I really like this repackaging. I think it's fabulous. And it's it's like you said, for the fans, for the completest, for all the Motorhead fans that love the hidden gems and the live recordings, I think it's great and fantastic. In the short time that we have, I just want to ask you a few other questions. Right. Me and Stefan, we saw you in Montreal playing with the Scorpions. And let me tell you, man, I'm so happy you're in the band. You reinvigorated that <laughs> band live. The drumming was off the charts. And and that's Thank what the, that was the takeaway at the end of the night. Like, oh my God, these guys, they're a new band with your drumming. I mean, um, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you know, been playing now for a while, I guess about four or five years in the Scorpions. Uh, it's more like uh, six years. <laughs> six years, six years. You know, just tell us about, you know, I guess, record even the new album or the 2020, I guess it's right. 20, last year's album, right? Right, right. Even that's been, that, that is probably one of the better Scorpions albums in the last 10 years. I guess, number one, are you working on new material? And tell us about your experience in the Scorpions in general. Well, you know, I had... When, when they called me about this and uh, my first instinct or my first thought was I want to motorize these guys, you know what <laughs> I mean? I'm gonna, I'm, I, 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 I like to make a difference in a band when I join them. I did the same thing with Motorhead because they were they were uh, leaning back in my in my opinion a little too much into the comfortable couch. You know, I, I wanted to, I wanted them, I said to Lemmy or, or the boys, Versal and Phil, I said, you know, when we were going to rehearse, I said, they were, ah, they weren't too happy about too much of the rehearsing part. And I said, well, we played these songs for so long, we don't need to do this <laughs> and this. And I said, well, I think you sound shitty, shitty. <laughs> while we should sound good shitty, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> it's a difference there, you know? And the same thing with, with Scorpions. I, I I like to make a difference. I, I wanted to bring heaviness and tightness and uh, and karma and, and feeling. I mean, we, we have a great, great 
uh, vibe in the band. You know, they they are happy now. Uh, what I understand uh, more than ever, they enjoy the whole situation. So, and and I do as well. So, when that all comes together, you kind of create a good vibe, and you're going to sound good out there. And I'm giving it my 120 percent in these songs to to make them as hard as I can because Scorpions is a hard rock band, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and a lot of people might think they, the show is, oh, it's kind of soft and stuff. I don't think so at all. I think it's it's a very heavy show now and great songs, great performance from a, a band that equally have so much experience. And I just feel great that I can make a difference in a, in a band after so many years and add something to their to their deal so trust me i'm uh, that's what i'm trying to do and it, it feels like we we're doing something right did, and, did you uh, start recording any new material yet like for the next album anything no 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 we we have to finish touring on this one okay all right because of all the pandemic bullshit and uh it was we really did not know exactly when we could get back out on the road. You know, we were planned to go on the road way earlier than we were. So uh, we kind of only toured halfway through this, this uh, album, I would say we still have plenty to play, but I do remember they show up at the, at the bell center as an amazing venue as always. And, Great show. The, the the fans up in Canada is is in general, Quebec, Toronto. I mean, now we haven't played on the West Coast at all or Calgary or Edmonton or anything, but Canada in general it rocks ass, you know. Yeah. It it it's mm-hmm. really, really a pleasure to play up there. And it's been for me since the King Diamond days. With Don Dawkins, and every time with Motorhead, we came by. Uh, yeah, amazing. King Diamond, we played the old Spectrum. Yes. And, and uh, I saw you at the Spectrum with King Diamond a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good theater, and and then with Motorhead, we moved on to Metropolis there, and you got you a know. good memory, man. You got a great. Oh memory. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Out of curiosity, Mickey, I know that we're nearing the end here, and you tell us if we were pushing it, but uh, anecdote, I never knew about you, and I just found out. You drive articulated trucks to the point where you did a commercial for Volvo electric car, electric truck. Okay, this is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you driving the band's gear truck while you're at it? <laughs> no, I, I wish I, I was sometimes. I mean, I've been driving a tour bus sometimes, and I have been driving some trucks. But no, when we're touring, I, I, I have to focus on the drums and, and the sleep and, and the partying, actually, especially up in, in your neck of the woods. Oh, my God. You know, that's always a, a great party when we come up to, to your area, you know, so. No, I leave that at, at, to the professionals, but it was a great commercial, you know. I, I like doing it, and uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. Why do you think they picked you? Because you're from Sweden? Well, no, not necessarily. I guess because, and I hope, that I have a good, decent reputation of being a, an okay guy. I'm I'm fairly liked here, I have to say, you know, and and they wanted to step out of the box a little bit from a, a suit and tie kind of fella showing off an electric truck. They want to reach the truckers, which are usually uh, rock and rollers, you know. And what's better than a motorhead drummer that could, you know, or a scorpion drummer uh. to 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 reach a a guy that sits around and listening to hard rock, you know, from coast to coast, it, it, it might help. I don't know. I think it's overall, I thought it was a great thing that they took that decision and stepped out of their own safe zone, if you would call it, you know, where 
you have more a traditional uh, commercial or so, you know. And where your music is actually louder than an electric truck. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I enjoy that. I said, I, I think you guys should really work on the big difference from this noisy. And that's what we did in that commercial from slammering drums and, and into a very quiet truck. I mean, you know, you smell, smell fucking apple shampoo in there and, and, you know, fresh air <laughs> to a dirty old sweaty, you know, rehearsing room, you know, Mickey, um, King Diamond era that you're in is considered, in my opinion, like the best era, like the classic era, the best era. A any sort of one-offs to play with the band or one recording or a guest appearance, any sort of connection with King Diamond today? Yeah, we talk. We talk once in a while. I, I He came and saw us with Scorpions in Dallas, where he lives, and uh, he could not come this last tour we did, unfortunately. They were busy, him and his wife. They they had to set up for something, so he missed that show. But King is a big Scorpion fan, and and we talk. And I I'm in constant talk to Andy LaRock and Hal, and and especially Andy as well. We live not far from each other, so we talk. And and I say what I've been saying. If they uh, ever want to have me behind a drum kit for something I'm I'm totally totally there for that that'd be great fun for me but I also with that said know exactly where King is coming from he's been playing with Matt Thompson for so long great drummer too that, yeah great drummer great guy and uh, it's not fair to him or to the rest of the band maybe you know because we went through kind of the same thing with some People that kept talking about Fast Eddie Clark and, and Filthy Animal Taylor. And and Lemmy said, never, ever, ever will I play with these guys again. They are friends and we talk, but I'm playing with the best band I ever played with in my entire life. And we're doing better than ever. So he's he didn't want to hear about it. So I see where King's coming from. It will be unfair to a, a loyal guy like Matt. But I said, if they had an interest of doing something, I'm here. If I got the time, I still play drums, and I feel that I play better than ever. And uh, yeah, tell us, uh, tell us a bit more about uh, what you do between tours and and recording projects. Right now, I mean, we're all reaching a certain age. Jimmy, myself, and you, we're all pretty much born around the same time. As we get older, uh, we, we just cannot stop doing the thing we love and the thing that makes us who we are. In your case, it's playing music. Uh, so you mentioned earlier in the interview that uh, occasionally you'll do a pickup band where you play covers of Motorhead, for example. Uh, is that something you do just to kill time or to remain active or it's is it because you no. just cannot sit still no not really i i play a lot of ice hockey when i'm back here i play two to three times a week nice and uh i try to work out uh, a lot and uh i i do a lot of television shows i just recently got back from crossing the atlantic uh for a big tv show here in sweden mm -hmm. So I spent 19 days on, on a sailboat. Uh, it's six celebrities leaving Canary Islands to St. Martin. And we're crossing the Atlantic. And this was the fifth season. It'll be 11 episodes starting from end of August. Uh, and uh, they've been asking me this for three years in a row. But normally I cannot be away for a month, you know. So this time we did it, and it was great fun. It, it was tougher than I thought, and we were in five days of storm in the middle of the Atlantic. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great uh, season for, for that TV show. And it's called Crossing the Atlantic. That's uh, amazing. Here I'd in, love to see that. It's Is on Discovery. Anything, 
is there anything you don't do? <laughs> no, nah, not really. <laughs> well, I remember I was in the jungle for a month on a survival thing there on 2010 or 11, was it? Uh, we actually left the tour when Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses played a three and a half week for me when I was in Malaysia in the, in the jungle with no food and and eating fucking insects and shit, you know? It, and it was funny, that's before I left, well, that summer we did festivals in Lemmy and Phil, every time I came to my dressing room, there was little jars with insects and they said, hey, you, you, sh you should start practicing now, Mick, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and there was ants and crickets and worms and all kinds of shit. I actually came back to Calgary in Canada there uh, from the jungle. That's where I took over from at Sorum again. So I missed three weeks in U.S. And then I joined uh, Motorhead again in, in Calgary. What a career. So, uh, what a career. Yeah, I, I love doing these adventure television stuff. And uh, they asked me to do another TV show, which I had to turn down, which is called The Island. It's a month on an island outside Panama, but it's in the month of August. So I had to turn them down last year. We'll see what happens. It's not often I can get away and stay away from playing that long, but I try to stay active. I play hockey. I do sports. Both my boys are in Stockholm now. Um, so, And I'm in Gothenburg. So me and my girl Mia, uh, wife, we, we travel up there a lot, and, and then I do uh, uh, guest appearances. I'm going to play this upcoming Friday, Ace of Spades and Overkill for uh, Pirate Rock Radio Stations. Huge party at a big place here in Gothenburg, so there's always something going on, you know, and then, then I'm calling and bothering the Scorps all the time, saying when are we getting the hell out of here? <laughs> and we <laughs> and we are now in April. We start in South America a month in April. So okay. so I'm, it's I'm, always something going on. And that note, Serious Bad Magic was released Feb Feb February 24th on Silver Aligning Music. It's the box set with a live disc, two unreleased tracks, an interview with Lemmy from that era. I thank you so much, Mickey. Hope to uh, talk to you again in the future other projects uh, thank you for your time yeah and thank you very much that elbow. oh yeah that was much better now so <laughs> can <laughs> i use uh, can i use that bit that we when we first started for the tennis elbow oh oh absolutely with a canadian okay. and uh this uh, this dr michael stern yep. i gotta say hi to him he he saved my my swedish ass <laughs> on 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 that tour so I'm very grateful for that. And uh, with that said, uh, with the Seriously Bad Magic, uh, I really hope people uh, get this one because I think it's a great packaging. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do to prolong the Motorhead legend and era. And uh, I think we had a great record. And, and we also offer a lot with this package, I think. So there's nothing wrong with that. And if they don't want to buy it, go and buy Britney Spears and shut the hell up, you know. <laughs> I think it's, Well said. <laughs> but I think it's fair to say that in the age of streaming, owning physical copy with a cover, a package, for me, the record collector, the music collector, vinyl collector, CD collector, I can only thank you for it. I never got into the streaming thing. Yeah, sure, I have to subscribe if I want to travel and, and listen to music at the same time. But I think most metal fan, most mu serious music fan will agree that nothing beats physical support. Of course not. No, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, if, if it's meant, and this, I mean, from my heart, if it's meant to be a positive thing for our fans and not a, an economical winning for us, which it's not, 
then I think it's fine. And I said, we are being very, very careful from this part of, 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 of from this side to not disrespect and overstep uh, the respect that Motorhead, Motorhead have and always have had. So we try to make this as tasteful and respectful as possible. And I finish with those words. Beautiful. All right. Have yourself. And I can't wait to come back to Canada. I love Canada. And you cannot wait to shake your hand again. Uh, (laughs) Useless useless and pointless for me to say it, but uh, in uh, 1986 at the Montreal Spectrum uh, during King Diamond Tour, I went backstage and met you. But that was 35 years ago. So, (laughs) no, you don't remember me. (laughs) <laughs> no not really because that was that was a hell of a tour that was the beginning of it all so uh and uh it was great up there in canada again i loved it the only thing i don't love with canada is when you beat us in hockey but we beat you once in a while so i'm happy with that <laughs> <laughs> all right i've got you right. take care guys and uh, uh see you up there <laughs>